I have been testing out a ton of new drugstore makeup for you guys. Hi, YouTube family. We're going to be talking about the best and the worst hitting the drugstore right now. And unfortunately, I have to report that there were more things that I didn't like than the things that I really did like that are coming out at the drugstore right now. Milani is releasing a ton of stuff right now. Now, I was not able to try their new lip gloss, which I did want to try, but I was able to try two of their palettes, their new palettes. That's Gilded Twilight right there. And of course, I bought it because it's right up my color wheel house. And then this one is the Gilded Nude. And I bought this one because I thought, well, I like nudes too. And... I am sorry to report to you guys that the quality of these is not up to Milani standards as far as those square palettes that had, I think, the 12 colors in them. I just, I have tried a couple of theirs lately that I have really been disappointed by. And as far as that goes, that goes for this one too. And this is Rose Revenge. These replaced their other ones that, you know, they had the different layout in them. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. Sorry to say again that they've used that formula that they're using for the Gilded and it's nowhere near as good as I feel like they had in those little gold palettes. Also, I tried their Celestial Highlight Palette and this one I had high hopes for because it feels very, very creamy in the pan. And it is quite creamy as far as the texture goes. It almost feels like it's oily, but once you get it onto your cheeks or wherever you're gonna wear it, eyes, wherever you're gonna wear it, it has so much glitter in it. It looks really pretty right there because the camera's not picking up, but it does have a very chunky feeling glitter to it. And trying to put it across my cheeks, it just showed up texture. I am not a person that likes glitter in her highlighter. I just really don't. So again, this one fell very short for me. All right. I got the Maybelline Lasting Fix because I had heard so many people talk about it being a dupe for the all-nighter and it very well may be. I haven't had the all-nighter in a long time but this stings the crap out of my face. Now granted my face is very dry right now in the winter and there is a lot of things that are kind of irritating my skin a little bit but after I put on makeup and I have my primers, my moisturizers, everything, and it still reaches through and stings my face, I know that there's a ton of alcohol in here and I'm really disappointed with that. I'm also disappointed with the Koki Refresh Hydrating Setting Spray Long Lasting. I've used this several times and I have found that after a bit, like two hours down the road, my skin, I was reaching up and I'm like, why does my skin feel so parched? Why does my skin feel like it needs another facial or more moisturizer on it? And I finally figured out it was this product. And so both of those contain a bit of alcohol and I just, it really dried me out more than I'm already dry. And then I also did try from Sleek this Life Proof Illuminating Fixing Mist. Now you can see how this has settled right there. See how that, those gold particles have settled? Those are micro pearl gold particles. And I, you shake this up so that you get all of those particles mixed up, which in theory is really good, right? Well, one thing is this whole sprayer just spits it, spits at you. And then I don't notice that there's any sort of glow afterwards. I don't know if it needs to be layered up a bunch or what, but I'm not into waiting that kind of time for that. So a couple that I do like though, that I'm really enjoying right now, I am wearing the NYX Radiant Finish Setting Spray. I wore, I put this on after I put my regular setting spray on, which by the way, my favorite is from Flower Beauty and it's the Hydrating Seal the Deal, just so you know. But I really like this and it gives just a tiny bit of luminosity to the skin without making you look like a total grease ball. And these lights have a tendency to do that anyway. And then from Flower Beauty, this is also their, their illuminating setting spray. Now this one you can see it's separated right here. What that is is an oil product in there. And so if you have really dry skin and you find that your skin's getting dry through the day, you might really like this. You have to really shake it up well. And then you go ahead and you just spray it across your face. I also like that this doesn't seem to have any sort of a scent to it, but it does deposit a little bit of an oily feeling on your skin. But that little oil, bit of oil in there, it is going to go on your skin. So it is going to give you a little bit of a glow. But if you have dry skin, it's really good for that. If you have oily skin, I don't think that you're going to like this one at all because it doesn't have the particles in it. It really just has the oil and it might just make you feel like you're more oily through the day. But I've really been enjoying it as that last step to give me a lot of glow. Two found 
recommendations right now that I know are hitting the market and people are starting to talk about. And both of these are fails for me, you guys. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, this is the dewy one. This broke apart on me. When I first put it on, I was like, what is going on? This it doesn't even look like a really good foundation, even going on. So even putting it on, I felt like it was a little bit like modeled. Does that make sense where it's a little bit like, just looks like it's textured. And then the same thing with the Dream Radiant Liquid from Maybelline. It was the same scenario. I didn't feel like the foundation was smooth. I put foundation on, I want it to smooth, I want it to hide my imperfections, but I don't want it to look like a cakey mess. These in a few hours looked like a cakey mess, but right off the bat, they didn't give you that smooth texture that, well, me, the smooth texture that I normally get. And the reason I was so excited about both of them is because they're supposed to be for drier skin. So both of these were just, they were no's for me this time. So sorry to report that, that neither of them worked out. Two other things from Milani. This is their blush that they have that is their new liquid blush. This blush might have worked okay if it had been just a tiny bit of a thicker form Cream blushes to me normally go on really easy when I use a stipple brush. This one just got, it got really patchy on me um, and I couldn't make it work. Plus the fact that I felt like it was a really, really orange color and it's supposed to be a nude color, which I was really disappointed in, but it wasn't just about the color. It was about lasting on my cheeks and it was also about it just not looking good. After I put it on and tried to stipple it and blend it in, it just didn't blend well. So that one was a no for me. Another no for me from Milani is their brand new baked highlighters. And I had such high hopes for this because I love their baked blush but this is the chalkiest mess as far as a highlighter. So you think that when it looks like that, that it's gonna go on and it's going to really give you a lot of pretty highlight. It doesn't. It just made me look drier and it gave me a lot of texture and there's hardly any highlight there. I just put two coats on there. There's hardly any highlight on, on there at all. So this again was another no for me. From Maybelline, I got this in that same set that I got the setting spray in and this is their super skinny eyeliner. When I use a felt tip liner, I put it on my top lash line really, really tight to be able to show off my lashes a little bit more. This one, every time I try to put it on top of, see how light that is for a black? Every time I try to put it on top of an eyeshadow, it ends up going gray. And when it dries down, it just looks gray instead of black or even, you know, even if it was a matte black, I'd be okay with that. But it just doesn't seem to want to build up even. I don't have enough patience to go in with several, several coats of an eyeliner because my hands are shaky and I make a mess if I go in with more than one coat. So that one had to be a pass for me as well. And then several of you were talking about, Melissa, could you look into the Bambi eye from L'Oreal? All right, I did. <laughs> And you guys, I have to report that this was not a mascara for me. It did not really help me. You guys know that I am really happy with my lashes right now because of how long they are. It didn't help me build any length. I can usually take a mascara and work with it and build it until it is out there. I don't know whether this was the brush. I don't know whether it was the formula or what, but I also felt like after a little while, this was flaking. As far as being a top lash mascara, building volume, length, holding my curl, this one didn't work for me, flaked off in a few hours. So I can confidently say that this was no good for me and I would just maybe hard pass on that one. So I don't want this whole video to be about things that I bought that I don't like. ColourPop came out with their Going Coconuts line and I really do like this one. This is Talk to the Palm. I wanted to get the lighter one. I don't remember what it's called. Even though this is a little bit more on the cool side, it's just a little bit too dark for me. So I think that it might be okay for somebody that had a little bit darker complexion. They really blend in really well. I just, I like that. And so I just go really light handed with it and it gives me a really nice glow. It is what I'm wearing today for my bronzer. And it, I did put a lot on there just so you guys know, just so you can see, but it does blend in well, really well. It's a really good formula. ColourPop's formulas are really good and I do appreciate them. And I really have been enjoying that one. I've really been looking a lot into nude blushes lately because when I do color, a lot of color, I don't want necessarily there to be pink. And I have always tended towards rose or pink blushes. 
not a peach blush gal because that's not my coloring but this one from kathleen lights and this one in ColourPop. this is called i need space and as you can see right there it does kind of look very peachy but when i got into it it just is a very pretty nude blush it's got just the properties of peach and pink and it just blends out and it just looks so pretty on your cheeks so that is another one that i would say was a hit for me this time and really am enjoying that one but i did get this is the high Gla glass finishing powder and then this one right here is the luminous powder so this is the, your basic highlight and it is what i'm wearing today and yes i do feel like this actually looks like glass and not a highlighter it looks really powdery on my finger right there Let's see if I can find a good place for it. But you guys, when you get it on, it just gives a glass-like finish. It doesn't really show up texture or anything like that because that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for that Korean look of the glass-like complexion. And that's what they were trying to do in this. And I feel like this particular one just shows up a really pretty glow. So it definitely is one that I would say if you've been looking for a product that wouldn't, um, that doesn't have a lot of chunkiness in it, no glitter whatsoever. This is just wanting to achieve the look of glass on your skin. So I feel like that is really what it's done. And I just feel like it's very pretty on the skin. It lays really pretty on my mature skin. So I'm happy about that. Now, now as far as the finishing powder goes, you guys have heard me talk about the Lancome Absolute Powder that has a tiny bit of micro glitter in it. I mean, teeny, teeny, tiny bit. But I also love the Essence Pure Nude for a lighting powder. I also love the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders and the Glow Powder from Flower Beauty just for those light dustings of pretty powders on your face. And that's what this one can do too. And even though that glow is something that everybody is kind of looking for right now, I think that if you're a mature woman and you have any texture whatsoever that you're not going to like that. Hit the high points with it. If you want to use it as your highlighter, again, this would be a great way to get just a really soft glow. But I think that it would be all over the face as a setting powder much too much. Just my personal opinion. But it does have a beautiful glow and I have been using it just as a highlighter on an everyday look. There are so many products hitting the drugstore right now. New product releases from all different lines and I love this time of year. So I'm gonna to continue to bring you as many as I possibly can. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. I really do appreciate that and it helps it get populated out there into YouTube land. I hope that you're all having a really great day, happy and healthy. Please take care of yourselves. I love you all so very much and I will see you all in my very next video. Bye guys.